And so, for one more time, coming up on tonight's 10 p.m. report, details of tonight's AIDS announcement that some Minnesota children now carry the deadly virus. A Mercy flight is ready to leave St. Paul for Mexico City. And a computer is helping medicine make big strides in helping the paralyzed walk again. We'll have those stories and more coming up on tonight's 10 p.m. report. Baker Square knows how hard it can be to get started some mornings. With that in mind, we introduce breakfast with fresh ground coffee. Hardy Baker Square omelets, golden pancakes, or our Belgian waffles. And to really get your motor running, our fresh baked caramel rolls, cinnamon rolls, and muffins. Breakfast with fresh rolls at Baker Square. It could give you a fast start on the day. Grapefruit juice? Sure, it's good for you, but... Great for dieting, but... Plenty of healthy vitamin C, but... But the taste? Well, pour on the pink for a taste you never expected. Ocean Spray Pink Grapefruit Juice Cocktail. Zesty, tangy, sweeter. This is grapefruit juice? It's not bitter. Hey, pour on the pink. Ocean Spray Pink Grapefruit Juice Cocktail. It's not just good for you, it's good. Ocean Spray Good. Order? I'd like uh, a Big Mac value pack. Make it two, please. Hey, what's that? It's their new value pack. See? You get a large Coke, a Big Mac, and a super-sized fry with 30% more. All for just $2.39. Hey, that's a great deal. Yeah, easy to handle. They've also got a quarter pounder with cheese and a filet of fish value pack for just $2.09. I didn't know that. I know. That's why I'm Gertzos and your son. <laughs> Serving and informing the Twin Cities for four decades. This is WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And now, Dave Moore, Pat Miles, Mike Fairborn, and Mark Rosen bring you Channel 4's 10 p.m. report. Good evening, everyone. It was revealed tonight that the disease AIDS has been detected in 40 to 50 school-aged children in Minnesota. Well, first let us establish that it has not been the disease that has itself been detected, but the virus. Uh, the children are carriers of the disease. They can transmit the illness, but they are not uh, ill themselves. Uh, Dr. Michael Osterholm of the Minnesota Health Department released those findings tonight. Uh, he was kind enough to come down to talk about the implication of those findings. Am I not correct, Dr. Osterholm? It is not the disease AIDS. It's the virus right. that's there and connected. Actually, the information that uh, is uh, now present in the state is, is not actually new. We've been aware for some time that children who had received blood and blood products, particularly children uh, who have hemophilia, in fact, had become infected over the last several years with the virus. None of these individuals actually are ill with the, Ill with the disease this now. This is not a crisis, then. Well, it's not a crisis in the sense that uh, there's any new information. I, I am concerned from a crisis standpoint, though, that uh, I hope that the citizens of Minnesota take heed of what we've been saying about the risk of transmission of AIDS among children in casual contact, and that, in fact, that this is not a major problem for schools, even though children have the virus right now. Uh, the casual contact setting will not transmit this. But you must be careful not to cause panic or hysteria in this kind of a situation. Does this represent a danger to other children? Uh, the children with whom these other these right. uh, uh, diseased children are in contact. There are several studies now that have been completed that have l looked at the risk of transmitting this virus in family settings where there's a young child who has been transfused and has developed the virus infection. And in looking at those family members over a several year period, none of them have gone on and developed uh, this illness themselves or any evidence of the infection mm -hmm. of the virus. And this was under very close family kind of contact settings. For that reason, we feel even more comfortable that students in school are not posing a risk and that much of the attention recently to the New York situation and so forth really has created a hysteria that's totally unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And while we think this is a very serious public health problem, this is not one area that we feel uh, do we need to, to be really doing something different than we're doing now. Will these children recover, these 40 or 50? 
Well, first of all, we don't know that they will ever develop AIDS. Uh, they do have the virus mm -hmm. present in their bodies. Uh, some of them may live a lifetime without ever developing AIDS. That's one of the mysteries which we still don't know, just how many people will develop AIDS uh, once they've been infected with the mm -hmm. virus. Those children will continue to be followed with time. Are, they look, is, are these 40, we say 40 or 50, are they scattered throughout the state? Are they concentrated in one or two districts? Well, basically, the number, first of all, really is, is just an estimate of w the children that we think in the state who receive blood and products, uh, specifically children with hemophilia, who might now be positive. A number of these children have been tested and found to be positive. Mm -hmm. uh, they really distribute throughout the state in the area where uh, most of the population is at. So, of course, most of the cases are now in the Twin mm -hmm. Cities. But, again, I have to emphasize that uh, this is not really anything that is that new to us in the medical community, I'm sure to the, to the general community they're going to be concerned, but in fact there's nothing to be overly concerned about at all. Thank you very much and I speak on behalf of all parents. Thank you for coming down and offering your calming tones Thank you. on this situation. Thank you Dr. Osterholm. A major aftershock has rocked the already devastated region of, uh, region of central Mexico. Just within the past hour, a tremor of undetermined magnitude hit that particular area. Authorities monitoring the region in the U.S. have described it now as 7.2 on the Richter scale. Just moments ago, it had been registered at 6.6, .6, but now we have 7.2. Amid the aftershocks and, and the aftermath of yesterday's earthquake, authorities are coming across more bodies. Now, while the official death toll stands at more than 750, most Mexican officials are predicting that the uh, ultimate toll, the eventual toll, will reach 3,000 and at least 5,000 people have been injured. In addition, 250 major buildings have been leveled. Today, fire crews still trying to put out the flames from the ruptured gas lines. Children and parents wandering streets looking for lost loved ones. The quake that caused the destruction measured 7.8 on the Richter scale. Remember, we told you this aftershock is 7.2 and was centered off the west coast of Mexico. And even though there were towns closer to the quake center, it was Mexico City that bore the brunt of the shock waves. Today, geologists said that's because of the makeup of the region. It's filled with underground lakes that amplified the shock waves. It would make the shaking stronger than it would normally be on hard rock. Shaking the, the rock underneath the lake bed is like shaking a bowl of jello. While Mexico City is indeed hard hit, other regions, including the popular tourist spot of Iztapa, uh, suffered damage. Tonight, the State Department says it believes two Americans were killed in the quake. Their names have not been released. Now, there is late word tonight that other buildings have collapsed. And some reports that tonight's 7.2 aftershock was nearly as strong as yesterday's uh, 7.8 quake. Thank you, Pat. There are still hundreds of people in Minnesota waiting for word on the fate of their relatives and friends. Some 50,000 people of Hispanic descent live in Minnesota, most of them from Mexico. Others are concerned because of business ties or friends on vacation there. Caroline Lowe has more. This evening, medical supplies were loaded onto this 3M plane at Holman Field in St. Paul. Tomorrow morning, the products will be flown to earthquake victims in Mexico City. Today, 3M officials also learned that none of the 1,000 people who work at their subsidiary there was injured, and that their facility received only minor damage. This is a uh, goodwill gesture on behalf of the uh, 3M Mexico employees. While some Minnesotans were doing their part to help, others waited for word on the fate of relatives or friends in Mexico City. The phone rang all day at the Mexican consul's office in St. Paul. The staff tried to comfort the concerned callers, but had little information to pass on. People um, ask for information on specific locations in Mexico City if we have heard that a certain area of the city has been damaged. Whenever anyone there tried to call Mexico on a direct phone line, they only reached this recording. Due to earthquake damage in Mexico City, your call cannot be completed at this time. Late in the day, the consul staff members were relieved to learn through a ham operator that their own parents were not hurt during the quake. But tonight, the long wait continues for many other Minnesotans with relatives in Mexico City. With Gordon Leach, Caroline Lowe, WCCO Television News in St. Paul.
The American Red Cross has begun its own effort to help the quake victims. The Red Cross is asking that cash and check donations be sent to the Mexican earthquake relief effort in care of Red Cross. The address, 11 Dell Place, Minneapolis, and the zip code is 55403. Another rescue effort of sorts is moving full steam ahead in Champaign, Illinois, where Willie Nelson's Farm Aid concert will be broadcast for 14 hours on Sunday into 25 million homes, from which millions of dollars are expected to be raised to help Council America's hard-pressed farmers. Producer Nelson is but one of 50 headline entertainers who are donating their time and talent to bring some semblance of hope and light to the nation's farmlands. 80,000 ticket holders are descending on the college town, and with good weather, the final count, according to authorities, could go to 100,000. Uh, by the way, Channel 4 will offer live reports from the Farm Aid concerts on its newscast tomorrow and Sunday. But of course, the most practical measure of assistance has to come from Washington. The current farm law at the age of four does not answer the needs of today's farmer. It runs out in 10 days, and so the battle lines are drawn for the bruising debate that began in the House this morning. Here's Jim Gately from our Washington Bureau. Higher farm prices would help solve the crisis in agriculture. But with more than adequate supplies of many grains, supply far exceeds domestic demand. And that's when prices usually fall. Minnesota's Tim Penny says the government must step in. When we have uh, bins busting all across America with surplus commodities, you can't tell uh, farmers uh, to go out and bring in uh, another uh, bin busting harvest. Penny wants higher government-backed crop loans and federal subsidies to boost export sales. While these plans may eventually cut ag department expenses, they would cost the government more in the short run. And that's where the deficit comes in. Some congressmen argue we just don't have the money. Uh, that maybe what we ought to do is uh, begin to look at the Budget Act and figure out that something's going drastically wrong. But some farm state representatives are hopeful all the recent publicity will help. Most members now are aware and are sympathetic to the crisis that we have in farming. They really are far more aware than they even were last spring. Sympathetic congressmen reluctantly admit their best hope is only for a small improvement in the farm program. Jim Gately, WCCO News, Washington. In just a moment, word of another plan for the Mega Mall. And we'll tell you why Nancy Reagan plans to wrap on MTV. That story coming up. Still hundreds of close-out 85 cars and trucks and vans. Our lowest prices, plus 7.7% 7 .7 financing at Towsley Ford Subaru, White Bear Lake. There's no place like Sears Open Home. And now you can save 10 to 40%. Oh, look. This wonderful sofa. I like it. At $300 savings. Save 40% on Open Home Terry bath towels. Gorgeous. Now just $5.99 and save 25% on all open home draperies. Is this great? It's perfect. Save 10 to 40%. There's more for your life at the open home sale. That's Coming in first. Ooh, going for blue. Come on into your fast bank. You're going to win when you bank fast. At your fast bank, it's so easy to do. Find out how easy. Fast bank. Use your card at hundreds of locations. Come on into your fast bank. You're gonna win when you bank fast. At your fast bank, it's so easy to do. Come in first. Join the fun at this one. Action, action is the main attraction. This Saturday, that's this Saturday night, blast off 8 p.m. in the Met Center. First time ever for the gigantic battle of the monster trucks in Minneapolis. Plus hot rod mug bog drag racing. All the kings are coming. Tickets coming. now, Dayton Ticket Outlets and the Met Center box office. See the monster vet, intimidator, king of the jungle, barbarian. And introducing the king kong of the monster trucks, Frankenstein. Blast off 8 p.m. in the Met Center this Saturday. 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 Just when it appeared that the last chapter had been written on the proposed Bloomington Mega Mall, the plot took another turn today. Well, a special legislative session to reconsider the mall is now not out of the question again. A compromise finding package is being designed that Bloomington officials believe will be acceptable to all players in this continuing saga. Marsha Fleur has details. As much as they say they admire and want a Mega Mall like Edmonton's in Minnesota, 
Most lawmakers stop at any talk of subsidizing the project out of taxpayers' pockets. But a new plan is in the works, which would minimize public subsidy of the project and put most of the burden on Bloomington. If lawmakers would give permission, Bloomington would levy up to a 1% sales tax on Mega Mall sales, impose hotel, motel, and liquor taxes. The city will also seek a mall-only exemption from the metro real estate tax pool. The state may also be asked to issue highway bonds, which would be repaid out of revenues generated by the mall. House leaders believe such a plan could pass, but in light of all the conflicting testimony at this week's mini-session on the number of jobs, tourists, and revenue connected to the mall, Senate leaders say they are more cautious. And Bloomington Representative John Himley says he won't let the issue drag into the regular session. We just can't wait to regular session. And if, you know, if people don't want it, and, and if they don't want the jobs and the investment, then I think we all need to know that right now. And we might as well just say that, uh, tell Triple Five that they can go on to other cities. This is Marsha Fleur, WCCO Television News, St. Paul. A Plymouth man faces the prospect of 18 months in jail tonight for trying to sell weapons to Iran. Kenneth Everson, president at ENF Marketing, pleaded guilty this morning to breaking federal export laws. He concealed tank parts bound for Iran and crates headed first to Austria. Today's plea ends a two-year federal investigation which showed Everson planned to hide tank supplies in boxes labeled auto parts and then sell them to Iran. The parts, the parts which were worth over $7 million, are in the hands of custom officials and Everson awaits sentencing. If you live in Minneapolis and you own a car, you need to be more cautious these days than ever before. Crime statistics released this week indicate almost 40% more cars were stolen so far this year in Minneapolis as compared with 1984. Reported thefts since January have reached 1,800. And in August alone, auto thefts were up 60% over last year. Dave? The car manufacturer, John DeLorean, was acquitted, as you know, on drug charges last year. But today, he was in court again this time for allegedly bilking nearly nine million dollars from his now defunct auto company. He was indicted in Detroit for federal crimes ranging from mail fraud to income tax evasion. No warrants have been issued for DeLorean's arrest. He is expected to be arraigned next week. In Paris today, heads rolled in the Greenpeace ship sinking scandal that's rocking the French, government's, uh, uh, French government, France defense minister, and that country's head of intelligence both resigned this afternoon as pressure mounted for their removal. They are implicated in last month's sinking of a ship that was protesting French nuclear testing in the South Pacific. One man died in that attack. Meanwhile, anti-apartheid clergyman Alan Bosak is free on bail tonight in South Africa three weeks after his arrest. He was jailed and charged with subversion. The day before, he was to lead a widely publicized protest march. Bosak is seeking the release of the jailed black leader, Nelson Mandela. President Reagan received a clean bill of health today at Bethesda Na Naval Hospital. Mr. Reagan returned to the hospital for his first exam since having the cancerous growth removed from his colon two months ago. Mr. Reagan says he made a 100% complete recovery. White House officials say they plan on releasing the official test results next week. And while the president has been busy caring for his health, the first lady has been spending some time in a recording studio, making her first rock video. Nancy Reagan is the lead singer on a new video which will soon be seen on TV. It carries a message warning the country's youth of the dangers of drug abuse. When we return, we shall do so with good news for Minigasco customers. But Mike Fairborn will have some chilling news and weather for us coming up. Coming in first. Going for blue. Winning. At your first bank, we have the money to help. To help you get started. To help you keep going strong. To help you benefit from opportunity. To come out ahead. Come in for a loan from your first bank. It's easy, and it's a great feeling to come out a winner. Come on in to your first bank. You're gonna win when you do. Come in first. Ed McMahon hosts the sizzling hot race for fame. Reach for the stars on the million and a half dollar Star Search 86. Saturday at 11.05 on Channel 4. Know someone you wish would give up cigarettes? Well, you really can help, but there's definitely a right way and a wrong way to do it. Nagging and other negative tactics just don't work. But quitters who get friendly help have a better chance of quitting for good. Wait! Now's a great time to help someone quit the right way. 
Encourage a smoker, nicely, to sign up for the Minnesota D-Day Quit Smoking Contest. Call for contest information and join the D-Day Winner's Circle. Here is a no news story, and in this case, no news is indeed good news. Today, Menegasco announced that it will not ask for a rate increase in Minnesota through this winter's heavy heating months. That's the third year in a row of no increase mm. request from Menegasco. In spite of the cold weather, even. Huh? Well, and we had, we had sort of a mild winter last year. The extended forecast has snow for the northern part of the state by the middle part of next week. No way. <laughs> I'm afraid so. No. Our temperature dropped 30 degrees yesterday uh. from today. Our weather guide, 57 is all we made it up to today. 50 for an overnight low. No rainfall. Sunrise and sunset there you can see getting shorter and shorter. It's winter's coming. The days are getting shorter. 24-hour temperature change across the upper Midwest. Temperatures as much as 30 degrees below what they were yesterday in this area. 20 degrees below what they were yesterday. 10 degrees. Little change out of the Dakotas. That's where all that cold air was building up. And so no much, uh, not much change out there. The high temperatures today, coldest right over the northern part of Minnesota in the 40s, 50s surrounding that, and then 60s. Cold pool of air out here is going to continue to funnel down over the upper Midwest for the next couple of days. A little bit of sunshine maybe may boost our temperature up to around 60 tomorrow. But boy, the rain is coming. Our satellite picture show, uh, showed last night a little area of clouds down to the southwest of us with the moisture streaming northward. And the clouds have continued to move over the southern part of the state. Also, some low clouds coming down from the north have pretty well sealed off any early morning sunshine that we're going to see. And as this system continues to move to the north, good chance of getting some rain. Right now, the rain is up to the uh, border almost of Iowa and Minnesota. And then extending southward from that as that continues to slide up that front, at least the southern uh, southeastern third of the state of Minnesota is going to see some light rain off and on throughout the day tomorrow. Our weather map shows that we do have a low pressure system and a frontal system associated with it. This system up here is just reinforcement to the cool air we have over us. And yes, that is some snow forecast for the southern mountains of Canada. And as that frontal system tracks onto the east and throughout the early part of next week, a chance at least of seeing some flurries in the northern part of the state. I don't think we'll see it here in the southern part of the state, so don't get panicked. Our high temperatures for tomorrow, forecast to be near 60 here to the south, 50s to the north. The real warmth confined now to just the southern edges of the United States where it'll warm into the 80s and a couple of pockets of 90s. Fall color, if you want to go out this weekend and see it, it's going to be a little bit on the gray side. Lots of color, though. Maples turning and changing orange and red up in the north, and that is going to be peaking this weekend. Some color through the central part of the state, about the first week in October around the Twin Cities here in the southern third of the state. So you can kind of make your plans from there. Mostly cloudy, 50 degrees, the temperature right now, the dew point 35, humidity 56%, north winds at 12, 3030 with a steady barometer. Our forecast then, partly cloudy, cool tonight, low of 40 degrees, northwest winds will be diminishing overnight, but 10 to 20 right now, mostly cloudy with showers developing tomorrow, winds increasing out of the southeast at 10 to 20 tomorrow, high of around 60. Clouds and showers on through tomorrow night with a low of 50 and on Sunday with a high of around 65 degrees. The extended forecast calls for cool conditions for us by the middle part of next week, but the last chance of any precipitation will most likely be on Monday. We'll start to clear up a little bit on Tuesday and Wednesday, but that low temperature Thirteen. forecast for Wednesday will be maybe wow. our first frost here for the Twin Cities. It should be about a week or two early for us if it really happens. 32, huh? Mm -hmm. Boy, all from 87 down to 32. <laughs> In a week. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Yeah. The latest work of the artist known as Christo is all wrapped up tonight, literally. Well, that's because Christo's latest project was to wrap the 400-year-old Pont Neuf in Paris. The project required 430,000 square feet of silky sandstone colored cloth, all of it wrapped around the old bridge. The 50-year-old Christo says it will not hinder car, boat, or pedestrian traffic. Well, you may recall Christo's other works, wrapping the Australian coastline and a dozen of Florida's Bay Biscayne Islands. Just likes to wrap things. In a moment, the story of a computer system that gives paralyzed legs new life. Stop into First Federal today. We're long on low-rate home improvement money. Get ready for the start of something big. Every week, the biggest stars tell their personal success stories. I was a delivery boy for a bakery. Bob Hope, Victoria Principal, Roger Moore, James Stewart, 
Joan Collins, Tom Selleck, Carol Burnett, Dom DeLuise, and more. Every week, Steve Allen uncovers the start of our favorite things and all-time entertainment classics. Success secrets of the stars and tantalizing trivia. That's the start of something big. Sometimes grown-ups touch kids in ways they don't like. I was wrestling with my uncle, and it changed. It felt icky. When touching feels funny, it's hard to know what to do. He said I shouldn't tell anyone. If that ever happens to you, say no. No. Then go. Go. And tell someone you trust. Tell. Say no. Then go. And tell. A message from the American Medical Association. New strides in the marriage of medicine and technology could mean new hope for people who want to walk. There are some 500,000 paraplegics in this country, people whose legs have been rendered useless by accident or disease. But a computer system can help some of them walk again. And today, the latest design in the device was unveiled at the 8th Annual Spinal Cord Society Convention held in Minneapolis. Mark Watts was there. Steve Winter walked 30 yards in just over 30 seconds. They were small steps for him, but giant strides for paraplegic research. He is one of six people in the country who is testing the device in Cleveland. He demonstrates it nationwide. We come every day and go through workouts and uh, stuff. Somebody that's frustrating, you feel it's not moving as quick as you like. The device is called the artificial nervous system, acting in place of the damaged spinal cord. The walking movements are controlled by a computer worn around the waist. It programs electrodes that are injected in the body. When touched, the ring gives the commands. The technology has actually been in use for two decades. Doctors say it will be another five years before the product will be marketed commercially. The system will be able to be out in the home, um, used every day in work, uh, and will allow the person to reach levels of function very close to that achieved by uh, amputees who wear artificial limbs. Marsole says the system is still too jerky. When the product is released, he says paraplegics will be able to lead a more normal life, being able to walk a mile a day and even dance. This gives hope to a lot of people why they all came here, just to see this and promote spinal cord injury research. Mark Watts, WCCO Television News, Minneapolis. In a moment, Tom Hanneman reports on the twins in Kansas City. And some final words on a final appearance by a familiar friend. Dave, I'd just like to say it's been a pleasure being around you the last seven or eight years. Uh, you are one of the best at what you do, whatever that is. And uh, when you're finished here at WCCO, we'll always have a spot open for you on NFL 85, 86, no matter what it is. All you have to do is learn something about football. Anything, any final words you want to say to him, Duke? Well, don't hang it up too far because we want to keep you close by. It may be dangerous. How do you think I got the yacht? By putting yourself in jeopardy. Jeopardy, the game that puts you at risk, starring Alex Trebek. Then you don't mind being in jeopardy? Jeopardy is my life. It's the second the most exciting game I know. <laughs> jeopardy, weekdays at 4 on WCCO Television, Channel 4. You've never married. No, well, I was married once, and it turned out the guy had a wife somewhere else, so we had a... You did not discover rejection. Let me just have a... Oh, wait a minute. Who has not discovered rejection? It's forever been that way. I told him, cuddle me, hold me, do what you want. I love it. I don't want her to hang on me 24 hours a day. Some of these girls, they want love, romance. Come here, come here. I got a wife. We hope you'll join us. Donna Hugh, weekday mornings at 8 a.m. on WCCO Television. Bert Blylevin has faced this situation his entire Major League career. Whenever he pitches, the opposition throws up its best pitcher against him, and that's the situation in Kansas City tonight. That's right, Dave. Charlie Liebrand on the mound for KC. So far, he's held the Twins to just about five hits. It's 5-1 KC right now in the seventh inning. Well, we've all heard and reheard the cliche, baseball is a game of inches. But tonight in Kansas City, it was nothing of the sort. Baseball was a game of feet, hundreds of feet, in fact, as in Steve Balboni parking this Burt Blylevin pitch over the barrier in left center in the early innings. This was a bases-loaded home run, number 33 for Balboni. What a grand slam it was. 4-0 Kansas City. 
And that was the beginning of the end for the Twins. Kansas City, as we say, now leads 5-1 in the seventh. Royals hoping to snap their four-game losing streak. Twins en route to their first loss in six games. In the American League, the games that count tonight. Cleveland leads California now 2-0 in the second inning. Toronto has defeated Milwaukee 7-5, while Baltimore beat the Yankees 4-2. So the American League Western Division is still in a deadlock between the Royals and Angels. That could change later tonight. Meanwhile, in the East, Toronto's lead now stands at six and a half games over the struggling Yankees, who lost their eighth straight tonight. In that Toronto victory, Rance Mullenix drove in a pair of runs with this single in the seventh inning. I don't know if we'll see this single, but he did indeed take my word for it. It gave Toronto a 5 nothing lead and helped Jimmy Key earn his 14th win. A key pitch to one hitter for seven innings. In California, Andre Thornton with a home run uh, for Cleveland early in that game. They lead 2-0 in the second inning. Let's go to the National League scoreboard right now. Then St. Louis 5-3 over Montreal. Pittsburgh and New York, a big game here in their deadlock at five in the ninth. No score early in the uh, Dodger game. And in Houston, Cincinnati beat the Astros. That snapped the Astros' nine-game winning streak. So the standings in the National League East, right now the Mets a game behind uh, St. Louis as it stands for the moment, at least Cincinnati, five games uh, behind the Los Angeles Dodgers. High school football tonight, Park Center upset sixth-ranked Cooper in a big way. The final Park Center 25, Cooper 7. Now Park Center went through the air to win this game. Todd Curvers hit Mike Guckeen in the second quarter, and the Pirates led 12-zip. Cooper, Cooper has Mike Sunvolt, Nebraska's top recruit in their lineup, so Curvers rolled out right here. Another TD toss to Guckeen, and the Pirates were on their way to win number three. Park Center upset sixth-ranked Cooper, 25-7. to seven. Friday night means, of course, we have a number of high school football scores. Let's go to it. Roosevelt over southwest this afternoon. Washburn beat North. Benilde St. Margaret's down De La Salle. Holy Angels dumped St. Bernard's. Stillwater routed Tartan. Coon Rapids ripped Mounds View. Wyzetta blanked Armstrong. Fridley 7-3 over Blaine. Brooklyn Center and Anoka both winners tonight. Irondale down Columbia Heights. Harding whitewashed Humboldt. Rochester John Marshall 55-41 over Mayo. Osseo defeated Woodbury. White Bear Lake 19-0 over South St. Paul. And Hill Murray 28-0 over St. Cloud Apollo. A Cretan down St. Thomas by a point. The uh, Raiders broke a 19-game losing streak to St. Thomas in that game. And look at this one. Rosemont, 61-nothing over Simley. Well, Lou Holtz has long been an advocate of the if it works, don't fix it philosophy. So when the Gophers square off against Montana tomorrow night, Holtz will go with the same starting lineup that beat Wichita State last week. The key to that attack, of course, is quarterback Ricky Foggy, who put on a one-man show last Saturday with three touchdown runs. Gophers in Montana tomorrow night, 7 o'clock kickoff in the Dome. Well, when Chuck Muncie retired from the Vikings and football last week, he was hoping to get his life in order. Instead, it appears just the opposite is happening. Today, his wife, Robin, filed for divorce. She said her husband of five years would become violent when drinking and using other drugs. And as expected, Curtis Strong was convicted of drug dealing today. At the end of a tense trial, the 39-year-old caterer from Philadelphia was found guilty of 11 counts of cocaine, uh, dealing with Major League Baseball players. Strong faces a, ma a maximum sentence of 15 years in prison. Anything today. forthcoming on the players? Do they s face any particular penalty? No, they were given immunity for uh, testifying, speaking, I right. suppose. Thank you, Tom. You bet. Look, each time I try to make this point, uh, I am charged with false modesty, but this is a point I should have made uh, last Tuesday night, but um, I was in such a state of emotional upheave, I, I, wasn't, I did not have the wherewithal to to, to put it all together. But the point is this. One does not survive 28 years at this news desk on one's talents alone. He or she has to have help from two sources. You have to have a supportive employer and you have to have a loyal audience. My longevity, I'm here to tell you, is the result of having been blessed with both. I have survived um, all these years in this high transiency business because my employers have refused to measure my worth by the fallacious standards of the so-called audience rating system. In my view, one of social history's classic shams. A hoax of such insidious dimension as to produce this circumstance uh, in our community. A newscaster who has proved her skill and credibility beyond all doubt is suddenly instructed to alter her personality to accommodate the style of her co-worker and the whims of her audience with which her employer pretends familiarity. I don't think we should disparage that this very qualified 
newscaster's compliance with the order, but rather be outraged that her employer had the temerity and the gracelessness to even suggest it. It is a loathsome work condition that underscores my own good fortune. Under two managements, over these 28, 35 years, at no time has any executive here so much as hinted that my job might be at stake because of failing ratings. At no time have I been warned to lay off of this or take it easy on that. What employer, what manager of what television station do you know would allow his newscaster to get away with all that silly stuff you saw an hour ago? Employers such as mine, as mine are what keep audiences such as you. And I thank God, I tell you, for the both of you. Now, the other point is, huh, we're running over, folks. Do not worry about the state of this news program. Columbia, DuPont, and Peabody people have already recognized Don Shelby as an exceptionally gifted journalist. And this one has had your solid approval uh, for three years. And for the last three months, she has been carrying more than her share of the load, I might add. As soon as she drops that bomb, she's going to be in good shape. <laughs> Dave, it has been an honor and a privilege to sit next to you. And any success that I may have, ha you know, it goes to you. And I thank you. I thank you for your patience. <laughs> and I'm going to miss yeah. you. If you want well, any help with the big words, I'll be around. All right. <laughs> That's going to do it for tonight's 10. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night, everyone. Thank you. What does a guy watch on his first evening at home in almost 30 years? One guess. Good evening, everyone. I'm Don Shelby. I'm Pat Miles. You have been Beginning this Monday. WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. On Falcon Crest. You're gonna make it because I love you. And I'll always be with you. Mrs. Gioberti, do you have anything to say for yourself before I pronounce sentence? No, Your Honor, I don't. I would like to address the court, if I may. Look at her without thinking of the two of you together. That baby was your idea in the first place. 